Let's call this meeting to order. General government, um, general government, governmental affairs, forgot getting where I am today. Uh, let's hear from um, Senator Kowser first, Senate Bill 374. Your own. We just discussed this in your subcommittee, and I'll try not to just rehash it other than that this was the bill brought by the Georgia Municipal Association seeking to change the terminology used in the Georgia Redevelopment Powers Act, changing the word slums to uh, pockets of blight. Uh, and that, of course, was at the request of municipalities and counties who were hesitant to designate areas of their own territory as uh, slums in order to utilize the redevelopment law powers, they had to do that, and that's such a negative connotation. Uh, it has impeded or in, in heat, in, in impaired their willingness to do so and to use the law. So by, it, it doesn't change the words of the definition of slum at all. It just takes that definition from that section and, and redefines it as a, a pocket of blight and moves it alphabetically in the bill so that it goes under that definition. Uh, it does not in any way uh, change or impact uh, eligibility for any federal grants. That's been verified by the Housing and Urban Development Department as well as the Department of Community Affairs. It has the amendment uh, that's added to it uh, in the committee substitute that deals with the um, area of the Beltline here in Atlanta, including that, I think, in the definitions of areas that you can use redevelopment laws for. That's important to the city of Atlanta. I have no objection with that being included in the bill. I think that really passed the House as a separate freestanding bill already this session. All right. We have a few questions. Representative Fleming. Madam Chair, I was simply going to speak to the uh, substitute that's in front of you for the benefit of those members of the committee that weren't here during subcommittee. Um, as, as the House members will recall, Chairman Jay Roberts brought a, brought a bill through uh, the House force that passed almost unanimously with no controversy, no uh, objections. Uh, House Bill 960, which made uh, some changes in the law in this same code section to allow the Atlanta Beltline uh, to move forward. Um, those code sections were the same code sections as the bill that Senator Cowsett has brought forward, which was very similar, has been mentioned to Representative LaDawn Jones's bill that we passed through the House, I think, almost unanimously as well. So what we've done as a substitute is we have taken Chairman Roberts' bill, placed it in so that when the governor signs, of course, uh, the bill hopefully when it passes both houses, we won't have a situation where whichever bill he signed last becomes law and the previous one is nullified because they both touched the same code section. Thank you, Representative. Representative Kidd. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, would this pocket of blight also include a specific cluster of 150 state-owned houses that have been vacant for over 10 years? It certainly can if it's, if it's included by whatever local government or agency is wanting to redevelop that. That would, would be the type of area. Would you have to get, would you have to get, another question? Certainly. Would you have to get state approval? See now there are state-owned houses on state property, but haven't been occupied in over 10 years. I would imagine if it's state-owned property, there. So not gonna really, be able not a whole lot of assistance for that area. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments for the senator? All right. Anyone interested in making a motion, perhaps? All right. We have a motion second. and a second. All in favor? Oh, excuse me. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. All right, congratulations. Thank you, Madam you move on to rules. <laughs> Senator McCoon, um, Senate Bill 346. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I believe the committee has in front of it LC 2125. 36S, which is a uh, substitute to the underlying bill. The uh, original Senate Bill 346 provided that one of the nine board now? members of the Department of Community Health would uh, be a participant in the state health benefit plan. Uh, this substitute provides that two members of the board will be active participants in the plan, that one of those will come from the employee's retirement system 
and that the other one will come from the uh, uh, be a excuse me be a member in the employees retirement system and the other will be a member in the teachers retirement system um, and that one shall be a retired member and one shall be an active member um, that's the change in section one section two um, requires that uh, the the DCH would seek the counsel of the State Health Benefit Plan Customer Advisory Council, uh, which is newly created in Section 3. Um, and the State Health Benefit Customer Advisory Council uh, would be composed of 12 members, all of whom are participants in the State Health Benefit Plan, and each of whom is an active or retired member of either the employee's retirement system or the teacher's retirement system. And at least three of the 12 shall be retired members of the teacher's retirement system, and at least two shall be retired members of the employee's retirement system. Each member of the council would be appointed by the commissioner of the Department of Community Health from nominations provided by nonprofit associations and state department human resource units, which represent at least 1,000 members of the state health benefit plan. Uh, and this is an important point that I did not mention during a subcommittee that there was some testimony about, that the members would serve without compensation or reimbursement, so there would be no cost to the state uh, to create this council. Uh, the commissioner would select out of those 12 a chairperson and a vice chairperson. The council would meet at least three times per year at the call of the commissioner or upon the call of the chair. And the council is permitted to accept the assistance of the commissioner in administrative functions. Uh, the commissioner would be asked to meet with the council to solicit input and consult with its members in the development of changes to the state health benefit plan. The commissioner would present implementation strategies and logistics to the council for advice prior to adoption and implementation of the same. And the commissioner may solicit council members' organizations in informing and educating active and retired state health benefit plan participants of changes in the plans. And finally, the commissioner would provide the council with all departmental state health benefit plan recommendations to be made to the board and provide the council chairperson the opportunity on behalf of the council to make comments to the board prior to the board taking action on such recommendations. Really what we're trying to get at throughout the entire uh, substitute to Senate Bill 346 is to increase the uh, consumer voice uh, within the state health benefit plan process, doing that both by having two voting members of the board uh, that would speak from a, a consumer perspective, and then by having this sort of uh, robust advisory council process uh, to not only improve things on the front end in terms of advice uh, as changes are made to the plan, but also to assist with rollout of any changes uh, through better communication uh, with the different constituent members. So um, that is the essence of what the substitute Senate Bill 346 does, and I'd be glad to stand for any questions. Any questions from the committee? No questions. Great job, Senator. I think I've heard this already once today, though. Um, all right. Uh, what's the pleasure of the committee? Move in a uh, motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Congratulations, Senator. You move on to rules. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, by substitute. Oh, yeah. He would be glad to, yes. So, Representative Brockway on this one and the the senator, uh, he's already left, hasn't he? I'm sorry, Greg. Um, I'm sure we'll have someone who would be delighted to carry it. All right. Um, well, with that, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>